Hey, how's it going guys? This is Nick from Old Anvil Speed Shop and today we're going to be installing a Aeromotive Phantom in-tank fuel system on Rob's 48 uh, Chevrolet pickup truck. Now, if you want to come in closer and take a look at what we got here, this is what's included in the kit. You have your stock, which keeps the fuel around the fuel sender itself. Um, the fuel sender, here's your inlet, here's your return, connection for the fuel pump. You go over here, this is the mounting ring that goes inside the tank. That fastens this to the actual tank itself. Uh, here's your fuel pump, a little inline filter stock, and then miscellaneous uh, wiring fittings and nuts and bolts that are needed to do the install. So. Let's go ahead and make our way over there and let's get this installed in this truck. You were waiting before we even started. No. All right, so the first step in this install is we got to drill a hole in this fuel tank to allow the sender to go into it. And we have Jeff over here just being a damn mess. <laughs> okay, anyways, all right. So the first step in this install is we gotta drill a three and a quarter inch hole into this fuel tank to accept the new sender and obviously pick up fuel instead of to the engine, right? This tank is all beautifully pinstriped so we're not gonna mess with any of this. The best spot we're gonna choose is gonna be this bottom right corner. It's all clear on the inside, no baffles, no foam. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this hole in there. Then we are gonna use this ring as a template to go ahead and drill our holes that actually fasten the sender itself to the fuel tank. So let's get started. Bad. Nice, dude. After you get your three and a quarter inch hole set up for the center of the center, the next step is gonna be drilling your perimeter bolts. This is gonna allow this piece to go into the tank itself. There's a little provision here so you could actually fit it through and up. And these are what's gonna mount the center itself to the tank. It gets sandwiched in here with a really big foam gasket so that it'll give you like no leaks and obviously it'll be a sealed system. So let's go ahead and get these holes drilled so we can move on to the next step. I'm gonna get a quick bolt to hold that bitch in place. Sick. How straight is that? Pretty damn straight. All right. What's your uh, strategy for metal shavings after the fact? Uh, each guy takes a turn and we all just pee in the tank and then we take the cap out and we just let it all come out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one obvious thing is we have a tank full of metal shavings. Uh, there's many ways to go about flushing this out. It's We'll remove the tank, put a garden hose, flush it all out. A method that I like to use is we have a little bit of a, um, probably a gallon or so of this old gas, or not old, just dirty gas. We'll put it in there. I'll make sure I slosh it around. There's a drain below the bottom of the tank, so it'll, it should all come out. I'll do that two or three times, filter the fuel every single time, and then take a visual inspection, and there should be no shavings in there. Once that's all done, we're clear to proceed on to the next step. Now that we hit, we, wow, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, now that we have all our holes, <laughs> now that we have all our holes drilled in our fuel tank, the next thing is to, tr is to determine the depth of it so we could trim our sock for our fuel sender. Yeah. All right, so this tank has a depth of 10 inches and according to the instructions from Aeromotive, you want to add one inch of this, so that being 10, we want it from the bottom of here to somewhere over here at 11 inches. You give it a mark, you trim it out, then from here we could go on to assembling our actual fuel sender itself, mounting the fuel pump to the sender, 
uh, clamping the lines, getting it all ready to be installed in the vehicle. Let's do it. All right. So now. Let's get some fucking scissors. And now that with that trimmed out, you go ahead and reinstall it back onto its sock. Make sure it's seated all nice and flat. Perfect. All right, now that we have our holes drilled, the next step is to install this ring. Um, it has a little provision here so you can actually get it through the tank. And then you be very careful not to drop it. And you line it up with the holes. Ready? Okay. All right, so after we have our lock ring installed, you're gonna put this stuff. Joy's working in the shop. Yeah. All right. We love it. Ready? Yeah. Cool. So after getting your uh, the ring installed in the tank, you're gonna go ahead and put this guide on. My agent's going to be so pissed I took this job. Rad. All right. So once you got this guide ring installed, you're going to go ahead and shove this in the tank. Remember, we added one more inch per uh, air motor's instruction, so it'll be a nice tight fit up against that lock ring. Now with the uh, stock installed, uh, I'm gonna verify my tank depth measurement because the next thing we're gonna do is attach the fuel pump to the tender itself. That measurement's kind of important so your fuel pickup always remains in fuel until you get to like a quarter eighth of a tank. So let's go ahead and measure this now. And again, it's still 10 inches, so we'll go ahead and go to the bench, assemble everything and then Stop it in the tank and we'll be done. There I go. So here's the fuel pump used on this aeromotive system. Uh, it has two caps you need to remove in order to install it. Pop that one off. Here's the little pickup sock. It has a little lock ring that keeps it in place and one little clip that needs to be mounted over this stud to uh, secure it in place. And it just clicks right on spoke too soon. Like that. You see that it's properly engaged in this clip so you know it's not going to be going anyway. The next step is here, you got to trim the pickup tube to slide over this nipple on the uh, fuel pump. Remember we had a... It can't work in these conditions. All right, so now that we have the sock mounted onto the fuel pump, the next thing to figure out is our tank depth. We measured it last and it was 10 inches, so we're gonna go ahead and come over here. Oops, 10 inches, right there. And then the next thing we need to do is trim out our pickup tube. I wanna say right about there, we'll get that done. We'll make a little cut there. You always wanna leave extra past this nipple to heat it up and slide it on which we're gonna do next. Actually, no, we're not gonna do that next. Before we trim out this tube, the next thing we need to do is cut this bracket because obviously it hangs past 10. You wanna get it right about here so you have enough room for your tube mounting clamps to mount the pump to this uh, piece right here. So let's go ahead and go to the bandsaw and trim this out. Then we'll trim this tube out, fasten them together, then it'll pretty much be ready to go into our fuel tank. I call that a hate crime. Ah, 
I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next thing we need to do is trim up this pickup tube to um, get us our 10 inches of tank depth. I made it a little mark there with the Sharpie. And we just go ahead and bam. So next thing you need to do is heat this tube up. It expands when you heat it up and then it hardens up when it cools down. So you want to heat it up, shove it on there, hold it for a few seconds, make sure it's a good and tight fit. And then you're going to put a small little hose clamp on it when all said and done. After that, we're going to fasten the pump to this piece right here, and then we're pretty much good to go. <clears throat> Just like that. And once it's on there, you take this little clamp and you go ahead and make this up. And we're going to fasten just like that to this piece. So let's do that now. Go we'll borrow some tools from Brandon real fast. Where am I going to find a quarter? Up oh, there it is. With your eyes. <laughs> Are you okay, son? All right, now that we have our clamps made up on both the pickup and on the tank itself, there's one connection that needs to be made. You just plug them together. And now this is ready to be installed in the fuel tank and uh, wrap this install up. Let's go. All right, now this is ready to be installed in the tank. Our first step is gonna be installing our gasket over the studs. And then very carefully installing this into the sender itself, or into the tank itself. Line up all the holes, get it sitting flush. And then lastly, to fasten this down in the tank, you're gonna go ahead and take these clear washers. Usually the studs don't stick out enough off the jump. So what I do is I'll put two nuts on there and I'll make them up just to press this gasket down. And then grab our little individual washers and slip them over each stud. So with these two tightened, it again compresses the gasket to allow you to get the washer on there and the nut. Nice little Yep, not as stupid as I look, bruh. And once you get all the nuts and washers started, go ahead and remove the nuts off those two studs that we didn't put washers on. And then go ahead and install your final two uh, washers and put those nuts back on. And then you're gonna wanna torque these down in a nice sequence pattern so it sucks down nice and even to create a good seal. So this concludes our install of our Aeromotive Phantom in-tank fuel sender. Uh, the next steps of this video is going to be us running fuel lines and mounting our fuel pressure regulator up on the engine bay. But as of right now, this is installed, ready to go to get wired and plumbed, and uh, that's a wrap. We'll see you guys in the next one.